I started doing some searches on, on PubMed and got a couple of papers on the mangosteen fruit. The scientific name is Garcinia mangostana. The first one that I received was on its anti-inflammatory properties. It was in 1979 from University of Madras in India. And and anti-inflammatories are a big aspect of people's health, even though most people don't even realize it, but nowadays people have a headache, they take an aspirin, which is an anti-inflammatory. They have joint pains, what do they take? An aspirin, which is an anti-inflammatory. And there's numerous side effects behind these. So this aspect of being an anti-inflammatory is a big part of the health industry. So I kept looking up and found another paper in anti-inflammatory from 1980, as well from University of Madras in India. And then the big one that came was from Sundai, Japan, where there's a laboratory there that did research on how the mangosteen fruit stops the body from having an inflammatory reaction. And that was a big paper to show what uh, is a buzzword in, in the health industry as a COX inhibitor. It stops an enzyme in the body that makes your body have pain and swell and so forth. And he came back a couple weeks later with about a foot and a half of research. We were stunned. He went and did a Medline search and he came back with scads of documents about the scientific validity of, as to why these things work. In the health industry, exaggerations can come. And Joseph and Gordon talk about a foot and a half of paper research, and that is not an exaggeration. There really is a foot and a half of research. As a matter of fact, one of the researchers uh, went so far as to state uh, that he found it very hard to, to believe that no one had actually introduced the mangosteen commercially to the market with all of the research that had been done on it. That's why when we originally talked to Dr. Templeman, he said, I don't want to look at this unless it's had science behind it, some peer-reviewed science. I was approached by someone on staff at the University of Utah Medical School, uh, who I respected, and he asked me to take a look at some papers. Now, all of these papers had been in scientific journals. And what struck me was the wide variety of applications, what we would call in, in medicine, indications for usage. Extremely broad. You know, it's one thing to say, you take this and it does this for you. We don't know why. But it's another thing when they've been able to say, the rind of the pericarp from the mangosteen contains xanthones. Xanthones are a chemical compound that is found within the pericarp and in the so small part, the pulp, or the actual tasty part of the mangosteen fruit. It's not familiar to most people because it's a chemical class that's not found in most of the fruits and vegetables and plants that are in this side of the world in the United States. Xanthones as a class of substances are found mostly in lower plants, things like lichens and, and pieces of wood. You're not going to want to eat that. But the only fruit, really, that exists that contains xanthones is the mangosteen. And it contains 40, approximately, of the slightly over 200 that exist in nature. The thing about science is it helps, it does not give all of the answers, but it helps give an idea that there is something to this fruit. Groups of scientists that have done the studies have had their peers review it, and the peers come back and say, you know what, that's legit. That's legit science. The science that's required to allow a person to make a choice about what food they're going to eat is a whole lot less detailed, uh, than if you were talking about what medicine they were going to use. With supplements and foods, it's an entirely different question. I mean, people can eat whatever food they wish. This is not a medicine. This is a food. And that was the first thing that attracted me, because most things in the supplemental market uh, have little or no science behind it. And, you know, I'm a doctor, not all doctors are scientists, and I don't necessarily consider myself a scientist, but I want to know that science is there.